you mentioned the word getting your authority a couple of times. Yeah. Educate us. What All is right. It? So basically, as as a driver, you can work for someone, right? You can you can pull freight underneath someone's company, right? So I try to simplify it as easy as possible. So typically, when you get your CDL, you become a driver. You're gonna go look for a job. A job. That person who has who who who's employing you has what they call uh, they have a DOT number and they have a motor carrier authority. That authority is what allows them to lawfully pull freight within the United States, right? So that authority comes with obviously fees, right? They, they, they're paying for that authority. So in order to get that authority, you have to go through a, 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 a process, right? That has a lot of paperwork, a lot of different compliance, all right? And, and then also you become insured, right, as a carrier. So you have to get a certain amount of liability insurance, a certain amount of bobtail insurance, a certain amount of cargo insurance, this is just in case something happens on the road, which something always happens. So this is what's basically protecting you and protecting your company as a motor carrier. So that's what your authority is. So when you, as a driver, when you first start driving, if you don't have your own authority, you're driving for someone else, yep. right? You could even have your own truck, but go under someone else's uh, under someone else's authority to where you have your own truck and 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 you you have your your bobtail insurance for that truck. So you're you're the basically the your company is a truck and you right, but you're going underneath their authority and you're pulling freight underneath their uh, their umbrella. First, I'm just trying to make it easier without complicating yep. it for the audience, right? So when you get your own authority, you're kind of doing your own thing. Now you have the opportunity to look for your own loads and you're kind of cutting out the middleman. When you have your own authority, now you have the opportunity to make more money because there's nobody that's cutting into that pie. The money is coming directly to you now your company, and now you can pay that to yourself, your company, and then your drivers if you have some. Okay. Was that was that clear enough? It was clear enough. Okay. I, I think I, you know, I, I'm I'm nowhere close to this industry, and I get it. <laughs> okay. So cool. so you did a great job answering. Thank you. That. All right. Cool. I just want to make sure everybody understands, and if not, feel free to say you know say it again or whatever the case may be. Nah, you did an excellent job. Okay. I want to go backwards for a second because we talked about going to school, you graduate. Sean Prez, I get my CDL, I'm happy. I, I, I just spent six weeks of my life working on this. I'm ready to go out there and make some money. Yeah. What do I do? Where mm. do I go? Like, how do I get my first job? Like, what does that look like? So here's the thing. At, at that point, that, that's what we call, um, <laughs> I, that's probably the worst, the probably the worst time in a truck driver's life at that point, right? Because as I as I stated earlier, your license is really only as good as the experience that you have, right? So when you when you when you first graduate and you get your license, your license is clean, clean slate, right? But there's no miles on that license. You have no experience. So what's gonna happen is you have to, in most cases, and this is not all the time. But in most cases, you got to do what they call OTR or go over the road, right? So what happens when you go over the road, there's going to be a whole bunch of companies that's going to come at you and they're going to say, all right, Mr. Green truck driver, who's never driven before. Stop, we stop, know that stop, stop before you. What is over the road? What, what is okay, that? Okay, so over the road basically means that you're, 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 you're driving a truck, 48 states, you're, 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 you're in Jersey one day, you're in California the next, you're in Wyoming the next, you're, you're, you're in Nebraska, you're all over the place. Basically, that company is sending you everywhere and anywhere. You're not coming home. Gotcha. Your bed is that truck. You live in that truck, right? And, and, and most people have to go through that rite of passage before they're able to get the experience on their license to where they'll be able to get hired locally because most local jobs aren't gonna hire somebody fresh out of school because here again, the liability. All companies have criteria that they put in place and also their insurance is gonna put in place because their insurance is not gonna allow them to hire a brand new driver. Because if a driver wrecks a truck or kills a family of four, your company's done, right? So we're, 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 we're talking about one of the most high risk jobs in, in, in the world. Right, so you have to have that experience in, under your belt, and not only that experience, but with that experience, you have to show that you have been a good driver during that time. 
right? So you have what they call MVR, your motor vehicle record, right? So anytime you get hired, a company is going to pull your MVR. They're going to look at your tickets, right? How many tickets have you had? How many violations have you had? Have you had reckless driving? Have you had a DUI? All these things. And what's very important is not only is it going to, not only does your, your CDL driving career impact you, but also prior to you getting your CDL impacts you as well. Right. So even before you looked, they're looking at that whole picture of are you careless or not? Can we trust you with our truck? Right. So in order to build up that profile, it takes you about at least minimum six months, minimum six months. And before back in the day, the criteria would be a year to two years before you'd be able to get hired locally. But now, because there's such a shortage and companies are scrambling for drivers, they're, they're, they're lowering the, the, the standard right? Which is good and bad because they're lowering the standards. So they're bringing newer drivers on, which those drivers aren't, they don't have enough training in a lot of cases. So they're more high risk when they start to work for these companies, right? But it's like one of those things where they have to do it because there's not enough drivers. So they have to lower the standards. But when I started driving, the standards were like, it was like, man, you have to drive for at least a year, and usually that's over the road because those are the companies that's gonna hire you. Now, the other side to that is those companies are hiring you, but they're not paying you well because they understand that you have no choice, right? Your back is up against the wall. They know the game. You're in a position to where in order for you to get that job that you want, you have to go through this rite of passage. You have to work for me for six months. So I'm gonna pay you next to nothing, but, I'm going to train you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to put you with, with somebody. You're going to learn the ropes. You're not going to make a lot of money, but during this time, you know, you're going to be able to get your license to a point to where you can get that other job. So they use you in effect for that time. They pay you under market value because you really don't have a choice, right? So you're going to take that time and you, and you just have to pretty much bite it and eat it. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, now times have changed a bit because of supply and demand. There's le less little, little, there's less supply and the demand is heavy. So now companies are saying, all right, six months on the road, come on, we'll try you out. Cause they don't have a choice, but still you have to have some type of experience before you're gonna be able to get that $75,000 a, 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 a year job and up that most truck drivers are looking for. You understand? Uh, yep, absolutely. If the barrier of entry to become a driver is six weeks of school, get your CDL, why, I keep hearing you mention that there are so few drivers. They're in high demand. Why is this? Yeah. Was it, has it always been like this? Is this just something in modern day? Why is this such a shortage of drivers. Yeah, so th there's there's a few reasons. So yes, th to answer your question, yes, it's been like this for a while, right? It's 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 always been a shortage, right, of drivers. So the the reasons why that 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 I think, you know, based on my experience is one, it, let's let's take it current now, right? Now, a lot of the drivers are either retiring, right? Cuz 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 most truck the average truck driver is probably 40, like 40 ish, right? 35, 40 years old, right? The average truck driver, the, 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 the drivers are retiring out and they're leaving the industry, right? They've been driving for 20 years. They've been driving for 30 years. They're all retiring. They're, 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 they're dying off, unfortunately, or they're retiring out the game. They're just done, right? They can't take it anymore. It's, it's over. The problem is, is that pipeline isn't being fulled, filled with new talent. Because if you look at the world today, these young kids ain't trying to drive a truck, right? Look, these young kids are not even trying to play sports anymore. They'll rather sit behind a computer and play video games, right? So there's not enough people coming into the industry, but there's a lot of people going out of the industry. So you got a big gap there, right? Not to mention all the other things mentioned previously, it's not the greatest job in the world. You know what I'm saying? In terms of just, um, you do, the toll it takes on your body, the 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 being out, the the, the thanklessness of it, all these different variables, it's, it's not fun. It's not a fun job. You can get paid good money, but 
there's other things. You could become a YouTuber nowadays and make more than being a trucker. You know, you might as well go around and, you know, uh, do pranks or something like that and get a YouTube <laughs> channel and get a million views. <laughs> so, so that's what the kids are seeing now. So where's the incentive to get these young kids into the industry to drive trucks? It's not a lot of incentive, right? So there's a lot, there's not enough people that are coming into the industry and there's a lot of people who are leaving the industry. And that's why that gap keeps on widening, widening and widening to where you have this huge disparity of not enough drivers. And, and, and that's pretty much the way, that's what I think is, is, is pretty much happening. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.